Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today is the first time that I can say I have shifted my hour from 12 o'clock to 2 p.m. And today is February 5th. And what is today? Today is the Lunar New Year. It's the Chinese New Year. And I was told, uh, hello, Angel. Angel. Uh, I was told that today is uh, actually this year for the Chinese New Year. It is the year of the pig. So anyone in the Chinese calendar, if you are born in the year of the pig, this is your year. Actually, it's everybody's year. That's how I think. Uh, what is the pig represent? It represents uh, abundance of health, abundance of wealth, abundance. So think about it today. As you move about your daily, every step, everything that you do, uh, may it be with abundance. Hello, Michael. Hi, Ani. Long time we'll see. So we are already in February. Can you believe this? January went by just like this. Uh, what did I do this year already? Uh, it's so much happening. So I hope your your year has already started with a fantastic, uh, abundant, and looking forward to moving forward and thriving. Well, this weekend, I should say Super Bowl was on, and at the same time, I was celebrating my birthday. And I love it. I love celebrating, celebrating this day. And in the morning, uh, I was spending some time with my mother. And what did we do? We uh, toasted with a little bit of a champagne, cheese, and crackers. And I toasted her because I truly believe it's not so much my birthday, but the celebration is my mom's. She's the one who gave birth. And I am grateful for being present, for being alive, for being here with you. Hi, Mark. Hi, Chris. Uh, so birthday celebrations for me are mostly saying thank you to our parents or saying thank you to my mother. And I understand that those of us uh, who don't have our mom with us, we can light a candle or just think for a moment and say thank you, being grateful. Uh, so that's it. Uh, and I spent it, it was fantastic with my two best friends that we've known each other since first grade. That is one of the biggest things other than parents and siblings and family being grateful for the ones that you take time and are with because you want to be with them, because you have history with them, right? So, and I want to share something with you. I want to share with you this moment that another friend of mine uh, truly took time to play a music for me and actually not only play but this friend of mine created this music for me and uh, it was he recorded it and sent it to me i don't know if you can hear it or not i'm gonna take my ear off and uh, i'll let that play for just a second hi mark amen right okay well, good evening to you. I'll let the music play in the background as I am speaking to you. I hope I am coming to you loud and clear. But uh, this is what I cherish. I cherish my relationships. And February being the month of heart, being the month of uh, Valentine's, being the month of love, right? Do you hear this? Okay. I'll play more at the end. 
But for now, for now, I just wanted to say, uh, <laughs> so how was your weekend? How was, for some of you who were into Super Bowl, did you have an excitement? Did you have a good time with your friends? Or did you watch it all by yourself? Back to heart. You know, I truly believe this month being the month of heart, being the month of red, right? It's uh, the time that we celebrate, and it's not so much about Valentine of a lover or a partner, but celebrating those who we cherish, those who we care about, those who we love. And it could be our pet, it could be a friend, it could be our lover, intimate person, husband, wife, and it doesn't matter. There's also something happening in February. And it is the month of heart health, which is uh, the health for heart and heart disease. So I want to segue just a little bit about how our heart if it is not healthy, we are not open to love. When we don't feel healthy, we are not up to par to go and do things. We are not happy. We are not feeling good about ourselves. So I was thinking, what can we talk about heart and Valentine's and loving someone? So it's the languages of love and how we communicate. So I want to know from you how you receive love. How do you feel appreciated? How do you feel loved? Because there are five languages of love. The way we are, uh, someone gifts us, someone touches us, uh, the affirmations and words. Another way of being loving is being of service right? And another one is the things we do. With that said, of course, there is the book with five languages of love. And each week, I'm going to be sending and talking about those on my uh, newsletter that is going out. And I hope that you sign up and I want you to definitely go on my website, which is healwithin.com and sign up. Be a part of my newsletter. You get more messages, information about health, about uh, the things that I talk about. And today, oh, Mark, when someone touches you, yes. And you know what touch is? Touch can be being hugged. Touch can also be uh, when someone takes the time, even if it is for five minutes, and massages your feet when you are tired. Or they're going by, they see you at work or something, and with your permission, of course, they massage your shoulders, right? As a matter of fact, if you take a few moments while you're working and massage your fingers and the palm of your hand very gently, you know, that's massaging yourself. But it's always good if you like to be touched, to be touched lovingly by someone who's a professional or someone you care for. And hug, hug, of course. Uh, so the five languages of love written by uh, Gary Chapman, it's one of the things that I refer to. With that comes how we love ourselves because being loved by someone else is coming from the outside. It's not from within. It's not us loving ourselves, either physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, professionally, personally. It doesn't matter. When we want something, Valentine's is notorious for um, everywhere you go, you see red. They're reminding, actually, they've been reminding us since New Year's that Valentine's is coming. No matter where we go, we see hearts, we see teddy bears, we see red, red, red. How often do we think about our heart? 
if it is not pumping, if we don't have the oxygenated blood flowing, and a good thing about that is breathing, good breath, breath that comes into your stomach and you breathe through your abdominal area, right? And then hold four counts, exhale. So that's one, giving yourself full oxygen, full breath. Another way of you loving yourself and making sure that your heart is doing well and being happy, feeling good, is surround yourself with loving things, a loving music from a friend. Every single morning uh, since my birthday, which was only two days ago, I've been listening to this beautiful song that my friend orchestrated and sent to me. It's heartwarming. So what warms your heart? I want you to share right here, right now. Hi, Mel. Just share what warms your heart. It could be a baby holding a hand of a child, your grandchild, your son, your daughter. It could be sitting across from someone and having a meaningful conversation. And at that very moment, you extend your hand and just hold their hand. That's it. It doesn't have to be full impact, but just a touch, a simple touch to say, I am here for you. I hold your hand. It warms someone else's hand, and it also warms your heart. Hmm? And what else warms your heart? A good walk around the park, around the block. It pumps oxygenated blood into your heart. Loving memories, whatever experience you have banked inside, actually is one of the heartwarming things that you can do for yourself. Be your own valentine. See this beautiful flower I have? Oh my God, I surround myself with nature. I surround myself with beautiful things. Even this beautiful um, beautiful mirror I have, I call it, let me lift it up, right? So I call this uh, a circle of life with lotuses. And in the middle, if you see right there, what I have done, oof, what I have done, I have put a beautiful um, stone where it says now, right there in the middle. I put that to remind me, being present right here, right now, just being present. Every time I come, I see my reflection. I see your reflection. I see the reflection of me for that very moment. I pause for a few seconds. And those, that very moment, the few seconds that I pause, noticing the words now that I placed over there is be present right here, right now. And that's what I do. I pause and I am present. Before I sit at my desk, before I sit to do anything. Another thing is with our heart, the number one thing that causes obesity is and heart disease is obesity. It is diabetes. So what I do in my line of work, I help so many clients who come in for dropping weight for, you know, I don't like the word weight loss, but just the affirmations that we give ourselves hmm, to be happy, to be healthy, abundantly happy and healthy is also every single day. Every single day, the things we do, not only to make our heart happy, but our happy, to have a happy body. And that means 
we have to be nice to our body. We have to be nice to ourselves. And take that moment, take that moment of now and give a wonderful, abundant, loving affirmation to our body. Something like, I am happy with who I am. I appreciate my body that houses me and supports me. Because no matter, no matter how thin, how overweight, how comfortable, how uncomfortable, how much we like our body or dislike our body, this is it. Whatever we have done to create right here, right now, it has been done by us, for us. And if we have a broken heart, hmm, usually our heart breaks because it hurts for someone else. Maybe we don't have the love. Maybe we don't have the lover. Maybe we miss someone. But again, it's about someone else. It's outside of you. I want you to become more aware of loving and cherishing and appreciating yourself. So the five languages of love, how do you appreciate yourself? How loving are you about yourself, your body, your heart? What do you gift you? When's the last time you walked somewhere and you saw a small little teddy bear or you saw a beautiful, uh, intricate little thing and it reminded you of someone you want to give and you bought it. Not necessarily for you, but it made you happy to give someone not expecting to receive either a flower or chocolate or something. We can all get it, right? We can give that to ourselves. So it's so loving to have our lover, our husband, our wife, to think about giving us something or it going somewhere and having a romantic moment with roses and chocolates in champagne, hmm? even rose petals. But what is the time that you truly stop, freeze for a second or two, and pause and give to yourself? Stand in front of the mirror, and as you are zipping up your pants or tying whatever it is or getting ready with your fishnets or whatever, putting your tie on, you just appreciate you. And with that, another way you can appreciate is be of service. So how do we become of service? Yes. Number one way is not only it fulfills our heart and someone else, it's uh, helping someone else, is volunteering. Volunteering our time either at the library, at a hospital, in church, volunteering our time for a good cause at a nonprofit organization. But volunteering our time, even if it is for half an hour or one hour, to babysit or sit with parents, grandparents, lovingly, or volunteer to walk your neighbor or your family's dog when they are sick, bake someone a cookie, or even go buy something or have it delivered. That is called a, not only an act of service, but kindness. I truly believe our heart can be more open and loving when we do acts of kindness and have more gratitude inside. And when we are filled with gratitude and abundance of joy 
and bringing someone else joy, that's when we feel good about ourselves. That's called an open heart. An open heart that not only gives, but receives. Sometimes when I ask my clients what makes you happy, they always say, when I do this for my children or when I do this for someone else, I want the next time someone makes, asks you this and you say, I make me happy by giving. I make me happy. I am happy just by being present. So those are just suggestions. You know, I, I would like for you to, if you appreciate today's session, if you like today's um, Heal Talk Tuesday, to take this moment and say yes, to share this message for some loved ones. Because at times of Christmas, Valentine's, the hardest time is the day after Christmas or Christmas Eve, the day after Valentine's or Valentine's night, or even birthdays. You know why it's the hardest? Because those who were expecting something, expecting to receive something, a call, a flower, or some gesture, and they didn't receive it, that's when they feel bad. But if we take expectations aside and we lovingly allow things to happen by being open to receive, that's a better energy, a more loving energy. And by being open, we're allowing the person who wants to give to us, give to us more lovingly instead of feeling, I have to. Because when they feel stressed that they have to, then it's not necessarily because they are doing it will willingly or lovingly. They will just go and do it because you expect it and it is like a duty. And it's not so much the material, it's the thought. So if you love someone, either parents, grandparents, even you want to say thank you to a colleague or a teacher, just a gesture of love, a heart, is the most rewarding and touching thing we can do for that person. And do it lovingly. Yes? Yes, yes? So, thank you. I truly uh, want, you know, everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be appreciated. Everybody wants to be cherished. Men want a little bit more respect. And, uh, you know, it's different. And women want to be cherished. Women want to be pampered. And we truly love the attention of the roses and everything. It is beautiful, but it doesn't have to be a bouquet of roses, but just a flower or something that says, I was thinking about you because I truly love you. And that opens the heart. So today, oh, it's heart. I didn't even realize it. Even this little thing is a heart and it's got roses on it. Wow. See, um, things work out. And I got this because a client gave it to me after we finished our sessions and she had a wonderful change from severe anxiety, from severe panic and anxiety. Within seven sessions, she had absolutely no more problems sitting in the car and driving because when she came here, actually it was her attorney that sent her to me. 
She was going through panic and anxiety because of an accident that happened in a, and they had crashed into something else. Another car crashed into her. And because her son was in the car in the back and the entire thing had created such extreme anxiety that she couldn't even drive for the longest time. So within seven sessions, this is what I got. Yes, not only I am grateful for being paid to do this transformational work in helping people thrive and go from panic and anxiety to be able to sit in the car and drive absolutely like it's day one and there was absolutely no accident, but it's appreciation. So this gift truly means more to me than anything else. So this is the work I do as it, it's not only hypnotizing someone and saying, okay, today your fears go away, but it's truly having this client go from panic and extreme phobia to loving, going out, driving and thriving and moving forward in life with absolutely no hesitation to sit behind the wheel and saying thank you. And not only that, in the seven sessions, she also came to drop 11 pounds because there was so much burden and weight she had been carrying for other things. You see, it's not only an issue we work with. I help my clients thrive fully, completely. And that's what I say. I say heal within is where transformation begins. So, uh, wow, that was a plug for a client. And I thank my client and I thank the attorney who sent the client to me. This is, I help the client. She feels better. The case will go better. The attorney is happy. The case will close and wonderful. Um, so don't forget, please like and share and go to healwithin.com subscribe so you are in the loop with so much that is happening oh yes hi ron hi alex hi rosemary um i'm gonna get your book and i would love to talk about that as well because i've heard incredible things about your book and this is what i do i love to collaborate and if there is someone I know that has a book I would love to bring her on interview and talk so if you have someone and you want me to interview them or talk with them starting March I'm gonna be doing uh, interviews on Facebook on zoom so you get to see me interview someone else and bring more uh, informative uh, inspirational talks for you and so you can learn more and it's not all about the Lisa show right uh, what else oh yes this month we started our group room it looks beautiful I'm gonna do a tour for you and uh, next week in a few days and uh, our meditation room was the beginning was yesterday we had a great mindfulness meditation class. And in two weeks, it will be a group hypnosis session, self-hypnosis, learning how to do self-hypnosis. So there is so much coming. For those of you who are, who are in the LA area, by all means, be in touch with me. We have everything on the calendar. And open heart, loving you. Thank you for being here. Uh, the five languages of love, be aware how you speak, speak lovingly to yourself, to your body. If you want to drop weight, start walks and each and every step that you take, say, I just release, I let go of all the burdens, of all the weight, of all that I have been carrying that I no longer need to keep on my body that I no longer need to carry or hold, I release to Mother Earth. 
And you can do those affirmations, appreciating yourself, saying, thank you, body. Thank you for housing me and safeguarding me. I now release another ounce. I let go. I am ready to peel away another layer. Every day in every way, I accept and appreciate myself far more deeply than ever before. Today is the beginning of me opening my heart, expanding my mind, and I am ready to transform my life. All this is because every single day, my method is to evoke what was and help my clients embrace what is right here, right now, from your heart, from your body, from your mind, all that you are, so that you can evolve to the best version of you. Amen. Thank you. Exactly. That is truly amen. Ah! So, starting today, let's do this. Ready? Go. Every day, in every way, I accept and appreciate myself far more deeply than ever before. Starting today, I evoke what was. I embrace what is, and I am ready to evolve to what will be. I matter. Thank you for being here and being present with Lisa. Let's see, what, is there any questions I can answer? Oh, that's beautiful, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for always being here. You are my biggest cheerleader. And uh, what can I do? What can I do? Ah, let's uh, finish the session with that beautiful song that my friend orchestrated and uh, played for me. Yeah? See you next week.